Premier Gospel. Dr. Nevis Sequila Mumba, uh, former Vice President of Zambia uh, and uh, uh, a Christian minister. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Uh, we want to talk uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Recently, a statement by you was released uh, where you outlined your, uh, your hesitation and, and actually your, your advice to fellow citizens not to engage with the vaccines until, as you said, uh, proper uh, research and, uh, was done on it. Uh, for those who are not familiar, Doctor, just clarify for us what the facts of your position are uh, to separate it from the noise on, on social platforms. Uh, first of all, thank you, my dear brother, for having me today. It's an honor for me to appear on your program. Um, in answering your question, let me first uh, state that I anchor my values and my beliefs on two pillars. The first pillar is my Christian faith and believe that all men are created equal. And that to me is extremely important, regardless of the continent someone hails from. Uh, so that's pillar number one. Pillar number two, uh, I anchor my views on being a pan-Africanist. Pan-Africanist to the extent that Africa is no longer a baby, it's no longer young. Uh, we must now get off the breast of, to say the least, the breast of the West, or uh, other you know, former colonial powers uh, that fed us, taught us what to do, taught us how to think, taught us what to dress like and how to run our affairs. Uh, I think that that can be tolerated for some time. And the nature of life is such that when a child is born, he's totally dependent on the wisdom, dictates and guidance of the parents. But there comes a time when the parents would like to see that child develop into um, an adult and start to make its own decisions and they start to make its own determination of uh, its destiny. And I think that this issue of the vaccine uh, falls right within those two um, ambils of, of thought. Um, and my statement, and I must make it clear, I am not saying that we should not take the vaccine or we should always you know, shoot down any vaccine. My message to my government uh, was basically that we should make sure that anything we make available to our people is not of a substandard nature, but it is something that we have ourselves verified to be good for our people, because that's not the historical um, background of most of Africa. Most of Africa, they don't, first of all, care about what they give to their people as long as it is branded London, branded New York, branded Washington, they believe that it's good for them. But there are other issues that I may not get into today that make me very uncomfortable. Doctor, so, so in your video that's already published, uh, you, you mentioned that you have uh, some evidence that suggests that uh, the vaccine that's been offered to, to Africa is substandard to what is available elsewhere in, in the world. Can you say what that evidence is? Well, I do not think I used the word evidence in any one of my statements. Uh, and I deliberately did not use the word evidence because that is another discussion for another day. My only appeal to our people is the fact that do not take this vaccine until we are sure of what constitutes it and what is in there. First of all, um, I do not wanna go into all the conspiracy theories that are flying around or could be flying around. But what is true is the fact that we are created equal in the image of God. And if the United Kingdom would like to verify the efficacy 
and authenticity of the vaccine from Pfizer or Moderna, uh, Canada had to verify it to ensure that before they give it to their people, the government is satisfied it is safe. Even the United States of America, they are on record of saying they will not uh, use any vaccine that they are not sure of that it's good for their people. There is nothing wrong with the Zambian or an African saying, following the same standard because we also respect our own people and we believe they are humans and deserve to be respected. We also want to verify that what comes to us is truly uh, safe for our people. We have been in the past as Africans mistreated and given vaccine like Taksigi um, experiment of which you are aware of uh, that um, you know uh, disadvantaged a lot of black people because they were trying a vaccine on them and trying medicine on them. And it is so common to say that when there's a new medicine or vaccine, they start it on animals. After animals, it goes to black people. Then after black people, it goes to other races. And I think that we are threatened in that way that we are the only people that can protect ourselves to ensure that we place value on ourselves. And I think my government um, has responded extremely positively to my message. Uh, the president made a, a comment not too long ago. He said, we will not be in a hurry to inject anything into the bodies of Zambians until we are truly sure of its efficacy and uh, its um, um, you know, uh, authenticity that we can use it on our people. The Minister of Health also followed up with a statement that they have not even made a decision whether to touch those vaccines. And when they do, they'll make sure they're subjected to what I proposed uh, to be the process before we give it to the Zambian people. So basically, I'm only dealing with a, a, a position that Africa does not concede, you know, concern itself with. Let's not open our mouths to just receive anything that comes. We are a threatened group of people. And so there are many people there are, that are- There are some people who might disagree with you on the process you just outlined of how uh, uh, medical uh, explorations are done from animals um, to black people, et cetera. Uh, and also that they, they, I'm, yes, very familiar with the Tuskegee uh, experiment, which then became quite a you know quite a, a dark blot on on history um but then there are there's some people who would, who would say actually since tuskegee um uh, there's little or no record of such thing in tuskegee we're talking the 1930s and since then uh there have been other vaccines which we happily use in africa which um haven't gone through the processes you you were saying, your response uh, I've noticed has been uh, because that's what it was is not that's what it should be. So with this particular uh, situation, you 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 mentioned there needs to be verification uh, with uh, a body in Zambia for Zambians to consume uh, use the the vaccines. Um, so what then does that say from you about uh, internationally recognized and accepted bodies uh, like the CDC and others who in times past their work has been uh, accepted and uh, what they've passed has been consumed by Zambians and Africans happily over the years? Well, thank you so much. First of all, I must state that uh, my statement was read into various uh, points of view. Um, as you are aware, this is a, a trending matter of the vaccine in Africa. It's been debated today. So it's a very uh, emotive subject. So you make a statement and a lot of people read into it from their own angle. Uh, I think my argument still remains that I may not get into the details of how the verification and the testing of the vaccine is gonna be done by us, but we do have scientists here and people that are trained in the same universities um, that uh, you know, the people in the United States and the people in Europe 
Uh, so and I'll leave that um, scientific expertise on how to do the verification in the hands of those types. My argument as a policymaker and as a political leader and as a spiritual leader is to just ask that before I eat this food, can we make sure that it's safe? And I think it's a moral question and it is our right to ask that question, just like it is the right of the United States, the right of Europe to ask the question that nothing comes within their boundaries unless they are satisfied it is safe for their people. We are not asking for more than that. We're just asking for that. How we verify it is our business. We have to write our own list of questions and uh, they are answered. I was high commissioner of Zambia in Canada for uh, uh, you know, some time. And I came to learn in my briefs that they do actually have a big factory of medicine in certain European countries where they make medicine. Uh, I don't know whether it's Germany or another place they mentioned. And yeah, on the same campus, they have three factories. One factory makes uh, medicines for the Americans, for America. The other one for Asianic countries. I mean, America, Canada, U Europe and stuff. And the third factory makes them for Africa. Now, why do they have three different things? Simply because of us Africans. We don't place a demand on certain standards. And so the kind of care that they take in making medicine that goes to America it is really impressive. And they pay for it when they are making vehicles. Uh, you notice that you know, America will not allow certain type of vehicle with certain specifications within their boundaries because they have set standards. And Zambia does not have standards. Any vehicle in any condition can come from Japan. The, you know, the vehicles they are throwing away because of smoke. It's this thing that we are trying to evolve within the African leadership. That let's put value on our people. Let's put Doctor. value on who we are. So, um, uh, and I know, I mean, I, I know it's a very emotive subject, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people were uh, more interested in what you have to say, because potentially by the next election, you could be the next president of the country. Uh, and so what you, what you have to say, not just then, but also as a church leaders of immense importance. Um, so uh, that being your position then, what do you then say to, uh, some people, even church leaders, who say that uh, if it's okay for Zambia to to take uh, close to five hundred million dollars in aid from from America, um, uh, why is it that we're nervous about what they're feeding us if we trust them enough to give us aid? Well, I think those are totally different matters. I think that my policy on that as well is that if we sit across a table with the United States in New York or Washington and discuss any kind of um, aid to us, it has to be mutually beneficial to them. Nobody's going to give you money because they like you and you're handsome or Zambians speak a certain way, so they'll give you $500 million. No, there's a mutuality of respect. There's a reason, a benefit for them to give that kind of money to Zambia. And it is that thing that will leverage to receive respect. The fact that somebody gives you money does not mean that then they will shout whatever they want down your throat. I'll give you, or oh, let me not get into that example, it's too deep because it's going to bring other uh, questions. But the truth of the matter is under my leadership as president, I am going to push for mutual respect uh, between countries. And I'm not accusing the United States. I'm not accusing Europe that they are feeding us with things that are not right. All I'm saying is we're going to verify it using our own uh, system and processes until we are satisfied. I'll give you an example. When I was vice president, um, we were offered uh, GMO maize during the time of a drought when Zambia, Zambian people are going through a difficult time. Um, there was no not enough food, our crops failed, there was no rain. And America said, we are going to send you GMO maize and it was actually on the ships. And my president then, he's led now, President Levy Mwanawasa, you know, called the scientists together from our country and said, they are giving us GMO maize to help us. 
he was of they were of the view he was of the view that we do not even have a legal framework created within which to accept GMO um, material into our country. And because we don't understand it all and we don't understand its negative effects on our agriculture, if we brought it in, he decided not to receive the GMO in the midst of a famine, highest in order to protect your people and to be sure that this thing is safe. And that's all I'm asking for. I'm not saying that they have put stuff in there to kill us. I just want to make sure that it's safe because that is possible. History tells us those things have happened before and we have to make sure that we do something to protect ourselves. So all we are asking for, if they give us money, thank you. But they give us money because there's a mutual interest and that's what diplomacy is all about. They are not going to give money to a country in which they don't have an interest. And it's that interest they must respect and it must reciprocate that they give us money because they are getting something out from us. And I think that we will not be forced to do anything or adopt any position that the West imposes on us just because they have given us money. And, and Doctor, what, what's been the church's uh, position in terms of um, uh, not just support it's been given to its parishioners. I mean, you're 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 not just a pastor by by title. You're an active uh, minister of the gospel. What have you and your colleagues, uh, whether the Anglican diocese or the Catholic diocese and others, uh, have been doing during this COVID nineteen? Not only to support the people, but also to uh, battle the uh, the uh, terrible. Uh, pandemic? Well, first of all, I, I can only speak for myself. Um, I lead a church organization called Victory Ministries International. We have um, 52 churches in the country. And uh, March last year was first of all to give all our members across the country to recognize that there is this pig that has come and um, we can manage it in this way. So we decided to locate some of the poorest areas uh, in our city and started to invest uh, money into those communities. We spent um, you know, hundreds of uh, thousands of kwacha uh, in buying, uh, for instance, water tanks, sanitizers, uh, antibacterial soaps. Uh, I went myself together with my teams uh, to post clean uh, against this. Then we realized that this thing was not ending. People had lost their jobs and the poverty levels began to rise. People were now being scared to get out there and venture out to work. And uh, people lost their little jobs that they had. So we started a massive feeding program uh, with our partners from around the world that we contacted and worked together in unison uh, in order to provide food um, on a monthly basis uh, to uh, 10,000 residents in the area that we chose. That is only for our organization as Victory Ministries, but other church organizations also carried on their own programs, similar to what I'm talking about. So I think that I've seen a, a wonderful participation of the church in this country in trying to alleviate the pain and the misery that has been brought by this pandemic. Of course, we can do much more, but even the church organizations now, you know, so many months after the, the coronavirus hit us, are not also feeling the economic uh, challenge of being able to carry the burden of uh, helping so many. But in our little way, we continue to be of support to our people. Dr. Devis, thank you so much for speaking to us. And uh, we, we look forward to uh, more opportunities to speak with you uh, as, as the journey continues to uh, in, in not only your political career, but also uh, with the, the work the church is doing. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you so much, my dear brother, and thank you for having me. Premier Gospel. Premier Gospel.